Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It was not by my hand that I was once again given flesh. Quit bombing! I was brought here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls! And I'm not going through all that shit. You already get the point. I fucking love Castlevania. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, obviously, is one of my all-time favorite games in the entire universe. Seriously, and like top list of games that Alpha Mega Sin reveres and thinks is the absolute shit. Makes nipples hard. Dicks are X. Stiff dicks and airplanes. That's what's up. And Castlevania is fucking awesome to me. I've loved it over the years, started back on NES, had the original trilogy, played the living shit out of those, threw a lot of controllers because of them, played on Super Nintendo, played on Sega Genesis, went on to play it on PlayStation, and then just asmed all over the place, had to go and just little out off the walls because I didn't want to clean it up immediately, but regardless, what I'm trying to go and say is, I'm a long time fan of Castlevania and have been for a long time and will continue to do so. But. One of the things I want to go and talk about, obviously from the title of this video, is Koji Igarashi, the, one of the main forces behind Castlevania, as we know it, since Symphony of the Night going forward, has departed from Konami. Dun dun dun, dramatic reverb. Now, he ended up leaving, and this was a cause for alarm for a lot of longtime Castlevania fans, but to a degree there is also a silver lining to this entire story. Now. He had a sit-down interview with the folks over at Kotaku, and it's honestly a very good interview, a, a bit lengthy, but I like that because you ended up getting to hear his views on the game industry, uh, his views on Konami, the Castlevania series, how it is currently uh, working on in the past, things of that nature, and it's just very cool to hear, you know, somebody who's been in the business for as long as he has. I mean, dude was with Konami back in 1990 in just a part. That's 24 years. That's a hell of a long time, you know, to be with any one company, let alone to be working on a franchise for that long. But just recently, he's been doing a lot of things for Konami with, like, social games in Japan and stuff, so I don't know anything about, like, the Konami social games and shit like that. Outside of this, like, one dating sim type thing, it's like Konami High School or something like that. It has, like, a bunch of, like, extremely, like, oddball, random-ass characters and shit. And I was like, what the fuck is this? But anyhow, so he's been working on stuff like that. But uh, any time that I've ever uh, known about him was his work with Castlevania. And... It's always been extremely kick-ass, considering that he's made, like, Symphony of Night, Aria Sorrow, and Dawn of Sorrow, three of my favorite entries within the Castlevania franchise. You know, he's been a main driving force behind them, and that, honestly, it kicks a lot of ass to me. But him leaving, I could kind of understand to a certain degree, despite the fact that it's it runs a lot of risk. And it's something it's kind of scary to go and think about, considering that he had a, a you know, a permanent position with the company, you know, all of his projects were pretty damn successful, all in all. Like, the, the social ones I was talking about were doing very well for him. And he had, you know, per, a permanent fixed position within a company, was making very good money, all of his projects were doing well, and then is going to up and leave and go and venture out on his own and do his own thing. Well, one of his main reasons behind doing that, which I, I've got fucking absolute mad respect for this fucking dude for saying this, was... He wanted to do this because his fans wanted him to continue doing all the stuff of his, you know, his main Castlevania games. And that's one of the reasons why he decided to go and do this, was because of the fan demand. And that right there made me happier than hell to go and hear about. And it, I mean, he even acknowledged, he knows for a fact that, you know... It, the main Castlevania titles, it's still a, a niche following. And that's really the truth. It's not, you know, it's not going to be Call of Duty or anything like that. It's not going to be Halo and da 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 You know, it's not going to be as, as big as, like, you know, all the Metal Gear Solid games that come out, but it's got its very diehard, dedicated fan base. I am a very big part of that fan base. You know, I love all those games. And... He wanted to continue to try to make games like that for said fan base. I love that idea a whole lot, and he even brought up Keiji Inafune because he, when he struck out on his own and all the success that he had with Mighty Number no. Nine, I think that uh, Inafune going and doing something like that has sent a big message to a lot of the more well-known and respected 
individuals within the game development community over in Japan that you don't have to be relegated to just working under this publisher. You know, you don't have to be confined to their rules, their regulations, and their, you know, extremely narrow vision. You can branch out on your own. And a success story like that is has proven that, essentially. And there's been a lot of things that I've seen through Indiegogo and Kickstarter and things like that of games that, you know, I personally have been wanting to go and support, and I have supported, and I've talked about here on this channel, uh, stuff I'm like, this game's extremely awesome, please do that. Now, Igarashi has, you know, pretty much a, a successful track record, in my opinion, and if he wants to continue making games of that style, of the, you know, the, what people would dub as Metroidvania style gameplay, you know, action platforming type game with RPG elements added to the fray, I'm all for that, because like, despite the fact that I played some of those games over and over and over again, the thing is, I continued to play those games over and over and over again because I liked them that much. You know, they, they were very addictive, they were just fun. It, it was kind of weird because, in a way, I had the MMO mentality to it. I didn't mind grinding for hours and, you know, it, it, you know, getting new gear and uh, leveling up and stuff like that and finding new monsters and then making my way to a new area that I couldn't normally explore because I was getting living shit kicked out of me and stuff like that. And I just, I liked that a lot. And with Castlevania, it ended up working really well. You know, most people would think, oh, t take a game like Castlevania and then make it, you know, kind of into an RPG. Oh, that won't be able to work all that well, but it did. Same thing with uh, something like Mario. I fucking love both of those things, but... Um, with this, I, I do. I, I want to see him continue to work on things like this. You know, one of my dreams has always been to see an official Symphony of the Night 2. You know, and I, I've talked about it here on this channel. I've made a video talking about it. Just, I would love to see an official sequel to that. But if he did a game stylized in that way, like if he were, worked alongside some of the people with uh, Arc System Works who do like the Guilty Gear games, for example, and had art like that and access to a game engine like that, where, you know, we had the most beautiful 2D hand-drawn sprites in the entire world, and a game that's like the size of Symphony of Night, but, like, way fucking bigger, and you see this on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and PC and Wii U and what the fuck ever, I would, I, I would just lose my shit. Seeing something like that, well, I mean, I would, I wouldn't be able to stop smiling. I'd be so damn excited to see something like that, because I love games like that. I'm a really big fan of 2D art to begin with. You know, 3D games it can be absolutely stunning and beautiful on a number of different levels for a number of different reasons, but 2D can as well, and I like that. And considering dude's really into, like, the whole gothic architecture and dark, moody atmosphere and shit like that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, like, down for him continuing something like that. I mean, even if he had to create his own Castlevania-esque world, you know, and, and somebody could say, oh, well, it's kind of a rip-off and stuff, but, I mean, if nobody's making games like that, is it really that bad? Look at Mighty Number no. 9. Is it just like Mega Man? Yes, but it's like the spiritual successor to it, so maybe he could make a spiritual successor to all the 2D Castlevania games. You know, may maybe he could go with a sci-fi setting or a steampunk version of it, or just do what the fuck ever that he really wants. It could be a modern-day setting, which I think that could be pretty fucking sweet, too. Yeah, and there's there's a number of possibilities, endless possibilities on something like that, but regardless, I just want to see this man do what he does best, and that's make kick-ass games that we all love and enjoy and play for years and years and years. You know, and, and anybody that, that gets creative freedom to just free reign, do what the fuck ever that you want, like, I'm going to make this, I don't give a fuck if nobody likes it, I'm going to make this, and it's going to be crazy as hell, you know, it's going to be all this big, and it's going to have this, and da 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 because... You know, before, I had my boss go and beating down my door like, What the hell do you think that you're fucking doing? Don't make it like this. Well, I'm going to. Getting creative freedom to be able to say that you're just going to do whatever you want, and especially if you're going to be having your ear close to the ground and listening to what fans want. That right there is awesome as shit. That, that's, that's one of the things I've loved about this. He's actually listened to his fans. And potentially at his own risk of, of job security, no less. And it's just, huh, I hope him all the best. So, I, I would like to see him do a spiritual successor to the Castlevania games. I would love to see a big success story behind him. I'd like him to get, like, a ragtag group of really kick-ass developers all throughout Japan or even America, where the fuck ever he decides to go and scoop up people from, 
and head an entire team and make something incredibly amazing like he has over the years and put it out there for fans to go and decide whether or not this is something that they have a lot of interest in but considering again his track record more like we're really going to I mean, hell, why not make a, a, a Hellsing game? But but fucking, like, the other Alucard, that'd be fucking cool. I never really thought about that. We're not sure. That make it makes a lot of sense. Uh, talking about Castlevania 79, I didn't even fucking think about this. Anyway, <laughs> there was a correlation between those two. Can you find it? But, like I said, uh, the, the entire interview is going to be done in the description if you want to go and read it and, you know, hear about all this stuff there. But the question to all of you is, what kind of game would you like to see him make? You know, we've seen him make the Castlevania games, he made Nano Breaker, uh, there are some other titles that he's worked on, but they're kind of, like, I can't remember them off top. Oh, wait, um, uh, the Gradius games, uh, Eldergate, and the rest of them I can't really fucking pronounce. What is that? Uh, Tokimeki Memorial? I... Fuck it, I have no clue what the hell that is. Ah, uh, an Automedeus, uh, excellent. Not a fucking clue, but what, what kind of game would you like to see him make overall? You know, is, is there a certain style of game that you want him to make? Do you want him to go and branch out well beyond all the Castlevania games? Because you've already seen him go and do that. Do you think that this was a good idea for him to leave a position over at a company? as well known as Konami. Do you think that's a bridge that's burnt that he'll never be able to get back over? There's a number of different things that you can go and talk about with us. Does it even really matter if that bridge is, is really burnt? It doesn't seem like it is, though, considering that how damn happy the dude is. But anyway, there's just a number of different things you can go and talk about with this. I thought it was pretty damn interesting as a longtime fan. I thought it'd be a worthy discussion piece. So anyway, this is Alpha Omega Sin. As always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers, game of the fuck on Hydro Storm!